Biggest meat riding fan bases. Fandoms are notorious for having the biggest army of defenders behind them at all times. And it only makes sense, as they say, if you love something, you're gonna fight for it. But the words mm, criticism and fandoms go together like alcohol and driving. It's fun to do from time to time, but you can't do it all the time. The biggest meat riding slash glazing fandom. And let's start it off simple with Apple. Ever since Apple's inception of the iPhone, I swear n**s have not stopped deriding Apple to this day. Mother that get the new iPhone every year, dude. It's not different. Wait three, four, five years, dude. Oh my god, you have the iPhone 10, then the iPhone 11. It's the same phone. Oh wow, they added a third light on it. Wow, oh my god. It's so fascinating. No, it's the same phone, right? You get a new phone like every three, four, five years. Three to five years, you get a new phone. Like, the fact that there are legit people who buy the new iPhone every year is top-tier consumerism. Well, well, you don't understand, Tommy. With, with the 15 Pro Max, I can officially use Wi-Fi 6E and Thread. What the f*** even is Wi-Fi 6E? Your work can't be so strenuous on your phone that you would ever need that. iPhones haven't been different every year. I had an 8 and then bought a 15. Okay, that's a long gap, though. See, that's like a seven-year wait. Ever since, like, 2020. I feel like if you still have the iPhone 12, which came out in 2020, you're good for another four years. As a matter of fact, if Apple didn't slow down every iPhone by about 10 decades when a new one comes... Or weld all of the important things into the phone, so if you try to replace them, it breaks the iPhone. That should not... Like, you, you should be able to replace your battery on your iPhone and all this other easier without the phone breaking. Out, I feel like I could still be chilling with an iPhone 8 Plus right now. Apple can just keep yanking from the iPhone and D-Riders will still buy the new one. First, they took the headphones. I thought he was going to be going into like just like famous people fan bases. It's actually cool he's doing Apple and stuff. I feel like another product. What's another product that has a big meat rider fan base? I'm going to say like sporting, like Supreme, like kids that wear Supreme, Nike. I think Nike, Supreme. Not Stanley. Stanley had a craze, and then it just immediately died. NVIDIA. Like, big NVIDIA guys. But that's also just because of fucking stocks through the roof right now. Xbox and PlayStation. More so PlayStation than Xbox. I think PlayStation players love PlayStation. I think Xbox players are kind of indifferent. I think Xbox players are... I don't want to say... Not all Xbox players, because some are, like, aggressive in saying their console's better. And this might be a biased opinion here, but I really believe that Xbox players just kind of want to be left alone, man. And I think PlayStation players are the guys that are like, Well, actually, our PlayStation exclusives are better. Ah, the controller's actually, uh, you know, more interactive. Like, it's just... It's just like, bro, come on, let me play on my Xbox, you know? Virgin cable that came with the iPhone. And it's funny how they really monopolized both of these. Like, now you need to get a dongle for headphones. And the cheapest official iPhone charger cable is $19. And this is $19 for a one and a half foot cable, by the way. But I officially had to draw the line when the Apple Vision Pro came out. It's one thing dropping a band on an iPhone. Two bands on a MacBook. But if you're out here spending $3,500 before taxes on the Vision Pro, you need a financial advisor immediately. This is straight up somebody's mortgage payment, maybe even two rent payments. And I think buying the first gen of a new item is usually a waste of money. Because like five, six years from now, whenever they come out with another Apple VR, I think that's when it's going to be worth it. Because the first version is always going to be the fucking worst. And I mean, you could say like, oh, yeah, the older version is always going to be the worst one. But the, like, the iPhone 15, yeah, it's going to be worse than the iPhone 16, but it's going to be fractionally worse comparable to the Apple VR 1 versus Apple VR 2. Display is heavenly. But even walking around with it, uh, I don't know, it just seems so dystopian. If you walk down the wrong alley, you're a free bag, and I don't even blame the thugs that are going to rob you. But the main thing I'm confused on why you would get this is that you can't even game on it. You can use Apple Arcade games, but you can't actually play Steam VR games. Compared to something like the MetaQuest 3 that came out and it's 6x less of the price. If I'm being dead ass, if I had an Apple Vision Pro, I'd probably just use it to watch YouTube. Like when I'm taking a shit. Just fuck it. Sque take, squeezing a dump out, you know, just watching YouTube. Like it's just movies. It's just easier to watch, you know, shows and... 
Like, because your TV is stationary, whereas if you just throw the headset on, you could, like, feasibly just, like, lay on your side and watch something. And you can actually see with it just like the Vision Pro and play games on it. I think I know which choice I'm going with. The one that won't bankrupt me. <laughs> oh, my God. Y'all f Apple fanboys got me defending this lizard creature out of all things. I swear I'm not paid off. I don't know if that makes me look more innocent or more guilty. The next people we got is Kanye D-Riders. It seems like the more and more Kanye gets canceled, the more deeper his meat riders grip onto it. Even coming from a super ultra mega gripped Kanye D-Rider like me, I could look at something he says and be like, wait, that was, that was a little wild at the least, right? But not. I think that's because if you have a wild issue or wild drama, the people that are stay that stay are going to be the super fans that are like diehard defenders, you know? Like those are the people that are going to be the ones that are more extreme than others. And since Kanye's done so many extreme things, he has the most extreme fan base. Now, the top Glazers I've seen won't even admit something like that. Like at the very least, we can all agree certain things he said on a certain day on liking a certain person is wrong right? And Kanye D-Riders will swear to you that every product at Yeezy is absolute peak. Buying every type- nah, the new Yeezy socks look so fucking stupid. I keep seeing ads for them on my fucking For You page on TikTok. It's pissing me off. And they're trying to show, like, how good they are, bro. They're, like, 20. They're just socks with fucking hard platforms. Both shoe, garment, and shoe pod thing. Honestly, I bought- Go. Oh my god. Like, they just- You know how dumb it's gonna look? Like, what's the point of owning these? They're not fashionable. Like, I just want to wear shoes. I feel like shoes are fashionable. Now, yeah. Now I only need to slip on a sock, and it's also a shoe. But it's like, when the fuck am I going to use this? I these, and I'm not sure if they're going to ship. Please don't scam me my glorious But some things like the Yeezy Foam Runners, it, it might just be me, but I simply <laughs> find them appalling. Sure, they're comfy for home and all, but why do I see people legit putting on fits with them? You could plop on the Nerf football logo, and I think it's one of them. Me, personally, I'm a stick with my Crocs. At least the holes look presentable to me. Then we got the Yeezy 450 Clouds. My who was buying these Venom Symboy ass shoes? Some, some of the Yeezys look good, but I would say, like, the foams are the ones that I see the most, and I fucking hate the foams. Dude, they look like dinosaur shoes. Who's imagining it with a fit? You wear these while you're sleeping, and the soul is gonna come alive at- The Yeezy foams look like if you stepped in a puddle, the water wouldn't leave that shoe for a fucking week. And you'd be able to, like, bend the shoe and wring it out. At night and overtake your body. The alternative name people have come up for the shoe online is the dumpling. And honestly, the resemblance is kind of uncanny. And Kanye fans will stay pressing people for not having him in their top threes or top fives. Like, if my friend doesn't have him in their top three or top five, I'm not about to go and give him a thesis statement on how Kanye's the most influential rapper of all time. And not having him in top three is a sin to all of I wouldn't say he's in my top five. I wouldn't say he's even near my top five. Like, I, I like some of his music, but I wouldn't throw him top five rapper all time. Am I going all time or just my favorite rappers? All time, yeah, he people are probably going to throw him in. But if I'm going all time what my favorite rappers are, I'm going to go uh, in no order. Eminem, Lil Wayne, Kendrick Lamar. I don't know if I want to include Drake in the top five because I only have two other spots. Travis Scott's definitely not on that list. Top five rappers ever. You're gonna throw. You're gonna throw Travis Scott. I think Kendrick Lamar, Eminem, and Lil Wayne are respectable choices. Ice Cube, no. I want to throw Ice Cube. You could. You could throw like N.W.A., but that's a rap group, not a rapper. And I feel like that's its own fucking categorization. Honestly, I kind of. I've been listening to Nas more, so I kind of want to throw him in there right now. But I also think that's just because I like Nas right now. And then I want to throw. I'm gonna throw Kid Cudi, bro. But he's not even a rapper. Like he's a rapper, but he's also kind of like a hip hop rapper. I'm not gonna throw Kid Cudi. Man, y'all would be amazing writers in Hollywood. And let's go right across the bridge to the next category, the Swifties. Oh, Before gosh. we go through with this, however, I have a statement prepared for such occasions. Um, <clears throat> dear. Swifties. In no way would I ever disrespect Queen Taylor and her queen status as number one. I've been an avid Taylor Swift supporter ever since my mother birthed me from her womb. It's not that I found Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift found me. The amount of turmoil and things she's- Okay, okay, uh, are they gone? Safety is the number one priority for me and my family, okay? We're not risking anything over here. The Swifties right now can make their own nation and have a thrive- I think the Swifties are more prominent, though, just because she re-released her album. I think two years from now, Taylor Swift isn't going to be as, as, no, as media-driven 
right? Like four, like four years ago, no one was talking about Taylor Swift. Like, I mean, everybody still, all her fans still listen to her music. Like, yeah, but she wasn't like a forefront on social media. I think she's just known now because her massive world tour and the re-release of all the albums. So she's just, she's a number one streamed artist right now. I think government. Their army would beat the likes of the USA, China, Russia, Japan, India, any nation really. I feel like out of all deriding fan bases, the Swifties are king right now and it's not even close. Like I could insult Kanye for example, and sure some Kanye deriders will be in my comments, but I'll sweat to the bullets known if I post a tweet hating on Taylor Swift, my full name and address is getting leaked to the public. Well, cause you can, and this is something where I'm gonna agree with Swifties. If you diss Taylor Taylor Swift, you're usually dissing Taylor Swift because her music isn't isn't your style. Her lyrics are good. Like you can't it, yeah, I would say when I diss Taylor Swift, I'm saying I think she kind of does the same thing too many times in the sense of like relationship based songs. But like her her lyrics are good. Like, if you read her lyrics, they're poetic. Somehow find my cousins in Ethiopia's address and dox them. I don't know how they do it, man. They work faster than the FBI. And even looking at something like the Taylor Swift Ayers movie, I don't think people realize how insane this is. I'm thinking to myself, this is an actual movie that she acted in. Y'all see the clips where the, the movie, uh, like the movie theaters had all the Taylor Swift fans, like, gathered around in the center on the floor, like, running in circles. And had a film crew on deck. Turns out that whole Oh, movie is a three hour recording of our concerts and this is it really i thought it was like a documentary with some songs the taylor swift the eras tour extended version included three songs from the tour that was not shown in theaters long live the archer and wildest dreams immerse yourself in a cinematic views from the history making tour which features music from taylor's 17 year 17 year award-winning career it's not even a fucking documentary it's just her concert that's more than a lot of blockbuster movies nowadays i don't know about y'all but i am not paying for a movie ticket to watch a concert in a movie theater that already happened even if i couldn't make it to the concert in person i'm just not doing it man i'd rather look at some recordings from somebody's phone on tiktok or youtube or something and what this nfl my question is Swifties is you're spending all this money on jerseys and merch and whatnot But what are you about to do if Taylor Swift simply stops giving a f about the NFL? I know for a fact 99.9% .9 of them did not care about the NFL before this Which is indeed top tier D riding someone making you pay attention to a whole sport You never even watch is at the maximum and in the span of their five-month relationship Yes, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey have only been officially dating for five months by the way I feel like we're in a genjutsu because this feels like it's been going on for five years You think to get married i don't know man i feel like i like it, it just her other relationships i didn't obviously keep track of but i think in this scenario she's like not old but she's in her 30s right like i think now is like all right you know you're gonna get married you know you gotta get married soon she's 34 yeah, you know, you gotta get married soon, you know, you can't have kids for too much longer. She, aka the Swifties, have managed to make the NFL $331 million. All for her showing up on the screen every 10 seconds to hit some emotes. Also, why does the demon come out of them when you- Nah, but I'm gonna still stand by that take that it's not Taylor Swift's fault that they show her at the NFL, at the NFL games. People dissing her for that is wild. Diss the NFL. The NFL's doing that because it breeds viewership for them. If anything, diss the NFL for being a fucking sellout just showing Taylor Swift all the fucking time to increase viewership it's not her fault she's at the fucking game she's supporting her boyfriend and she's rich you know she's going to a fucking nfl game just like other famous people do like i've seen white girl blm emily who advocates for every cause and loves everyone but let someone black hate on taylor swift or the 1950s side comes out of them they inherit their great 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 grandma's genes they're gonna be slanging every type of slur at you like no tomorrow i'm not saying this is the average swifty but i've seen it a lot more than i should have next people we got is lebron glazers now compared to everyone on this list i feel like lebron's is a little more tame because most of the time no, I think Steph Curry Glazers are funnier than LeBron Glazers. I think if you're a fan, like, isn't, like, Flight, like, Flight loves Steph Curry. I think it's just hilarious when people are like, oh, Steph Curry's so good. Uh, you know, he's really good at threes. It's just jokes and trolls and for giggles. But keywords. Most of the time. I think sprinkled in between the jokes is dead ass dude serious about what they say. Like some of y'all want that meat straight down your- Dude, the funniest shit is when LeBron fakes that he's read books. You ever- <laughs> You ever see, bro, I love LeBron, but that is like the funniest shit ever when it's like, when he's like, nah, I've like, I've, no, nah, I've, I love this book. I'm like, no, you didn't read that fucking book.
Throat. Why am I seeing videos of dudes on TikTok rubbing a lotion on LeBron posters? Okay, this is see, now that's just wild. Motherfuckers do that shit with my, with my fucking picture, too. It's just wild. Straight up gayer than having gay sex. You might as well come out. And I've never even watched Cash Nasty, but all I know him is as the biggest LeBron D-Rider in the entire world. But let's move on to the next person because I could never disrespect my glorious king too much. Next one we got is Elon Musk fans. Some of y'all might be confused and are wondering, Elon Musk has a fandom? Well, I'm here to tell you yes and... It's pretty sad. Not only is it- I think Elon Musk super fans are more so Tesla super fans that kind of fall into the categorization of Elon Musk fans. Sad that you're glazing someone till no ends meets, but you're glazing the richest person in the world. That has to add a little bit of sad brownie points, no? If you want to find them, it's pretty easy. Just go under any Elon tweet and you're bound to find some. Some of these people deride so hard, they call Twitter X just to appease him. Ain't no one other than an Elon meat rider actually calling it that. His fans believe in him so much, they'll get scared. I don't think anybody will refer, like outside of maybe Elon on meat riders like do you guys refer to x as twitter or twitter as x or x is x or twitter is x x is x or x is twitter i still call it twitter i will never not call it twitter for the rest of my life i will call it twitter i will never call it x well, that's gonna advertise supposedly by him and when it turns out that it's fake and they use the random elon musk voice ai for the advertisement they f around and find out their whole account gets sucked out its soul like i hope these glazers know that elon is not lending you a band i think some of them expect in a time of turmoil of their life elon is gonna pay their bills off because they glazed him and they always come up with an excuse when people bring up the billionaire thing well you, you, you've got to understand, he, he's not like the others. He, he's one of the good ones. Nothing good ever comes People do that with Taylor Swift, though. My white friend's racist grandma told me that the other day. I don't even care to hate on people for being billionaires like that. You made your money. What am I going to do? Cry about it? I got to make some money, too. But we all know there's exactly zero ethical billionaires out there. And especially with Tesla, I wonder if these D-Riders even know how those batteries get made. That'll probably sheath off the godly image they have of him. And every time I go in a comment section of a clip of him explaining some basic science, I'll see people like, Wow, he's such an anomaly to this world. What? How did he even think of that? Only Elon could. He could explain that 2 plus 2 equals 4 and his fans would be entertained. I mean, Elon is obviously a smart guy. You don't get to a $200 billion mark without knowing what you're doing. But I kid you not, every one of the clips I see of Elon explaining something, it's pure d suck to the max in the comments. And the last person we got is known by many names. Jordan Carter. Sir Cartier. Gay bisexual twink vampire. Playboy Carter. I don't know how Playboy Cardi, uh, does he really have that much of a meat rider fan base comparable to other rappers? I mean, he mentioned Kanye. I would say NBA Youngboy fans are more meat riders than Playboy Cardi. Relationship where he's the one always doing the most trash things to his girl, but she keeps running back to him so he doesn't leave. I really be thinking, how much abuse can you Cardi stands take before it's enough? Like, why do I see grown with kids talking about oh my god man his aura is gonna make me cream y'all cardi d riders will take his whole style and make it your whole aesthetic on instagram i'm not talking about one post i'm talking about ones that make their whole page it trying to act mysterious and opium and <laughs> meanwhile you just ringed up my big mac meal with coke earlier i've seen d riders also get into that satanic just because of Cardi. Why well, was one of my friends I grew up with in church for Bible study? Ever yeah, but most people don't realize that like most Satanists don't actually worship. Uh, not, not. I wouldn't say this about most Satanists, but Satanists. If you say you're a Satanist, that doesn't necessarily mean you actually worship the devil. If you're a Satanist, you can fall under the category of being somebody that is just against religion and politics being intertwined and kind of using the idea of worshiping the devil as like a means of pushing what is normal societally and kind of like giving a fuck you to like what that would normally be. Every week, rocking a hoodie with a pentagram trying to act opium. I know if I told his mom what activities he was up to, they strapped him to a table and started an exorcism. Only time I genuinely saw Cardi getting criticism for his fans was with the whole Aiden Ross situation. But after about two days, I think that was their limit and now they're back to salvating for his music drops. And if Cardi wasn't Cardi, any other rapper would have been booed out by the masses from the industry. Cardi's the only rapper I know that can abuse his pregnant girlfriend, play the PlayStation while his son is being born, and still have Glazers there ready to defend every reason on why he did it. In the actual footage where Cardi was getting arrested, there was a fan on standby already there ready to glaze. Shouldn't you be worried on if you're actually going to prison or not? How is this even possible? Cardi could go to a remote African village and some 
someone would somehow find him and get ready to glaze. I think they're dead ass NPCs spawned in the world just to do that specific action. I've never seen it so bad that they're selling things from his music video just to get a smidgen of his aura. They're selling the lollipop from his music video. Oh hell no, $251,000. The grass from his music video. How do you even prove these things? Do you taste it and go like, mmm. Mm, oh yeah, this is definitely- I feel like that's more for the memes though. There's no way somebody actually fucking buys that. My glorious Jordan Michael Michael Jackson. A glance. Last thing I have to say is, I don't care what any of his stands say, MJ did opium first. Follow me on Twitter, Insta- Alright, that was a W video. Love Tommy NFG. Anyways. <laughs>